What's up, Giants fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I want to talk about what now for the New York Giants after losing to the Cowboys last week on Thursday Night Football, falling to one and three so far on this young season. And folks, before I dive into the meat of this video, if you're new, make sure to check us out if you haven't already on all of our social media on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate all of your support. So Giants dropped to one and three, but this was your not prototypical loss to the Dallas Cowboys. And I'll explain why in a moment. Unlike last year where the Giants got blown out 40 to nothing in week one and then lost at Dallas when they started Tommy DeVito, the Giants were actually in this game. And in fact, they had the lead at one point. Um, and that's partially because of how well Carmen Brasillo has this offensive line playing this season. And I think if there is one or two takeaways from this game, you can take away that the offensive line looks much better this season in 2024. And the foundation is built now for this Giants team, right? They have both sides of the trenches rocking, and it's just coming down to a couple of important positions where I think the Giants are lacking. And looking at the pass blocking stats for week number four, again, going up against the Micah Parsons, who got banged up with the ankle, Demarcus Lawrence. Uh, Andrew Thomas allowed just one pressure. John Runyon allowed three. John Michael Schmitz allowed one pressure. Greg Van Roten gave up four. And Jermaine Illuminor just won. The Giants' O-line was credited to zero sacks and zero quarterback hits. So that's how well the O-line has been this season. Now, the first half was very ugly. If you're watching this game on Thursday night, I know the first thing you're thinking is the flags. Well, majority of those flags were thrown to the Cowboys. And there were some times where... If you're a fan, I don't blame you. Officials are throwing flags and then picking them up. Uh, it was definitely very bad to watch as a fan. Flags were thrown 18 times in the first half, but there were only 12 enforced penalties. Cowboys wound up with 11, yeah, just 11 penalties by the end of this game, and the Giants had four. Uh, Giants also outgained the Cowboys, held the ball for over 35 minutes. But why did the Giants lose? Well, they only had 26 rushing yards, right? But one key to the game that I mentioned on last week's Live at Big Blue Avenue is the Giants must get Devin Singletary going to get into second and short, third and short, move the chains while they weren't able to do that. Uh, Dallas ate up the run, and that's why they won this football game. As good as the Giants' O-line was in pass protection, they were just overpowered in run blocking. Um, and it's also on Singletary not being able to find the hole, and it's the way the game script worked, right? Worked, right? Um, a lot of penalties going on that pushed, you know, the Giants back at times, or just in general not making throws. Daniel Jones was 29 of 40 for 281 yards and one interception. That was on the final play of the game. The Hail Mary to Hyatt can't really fault him for that one, but. There were a couple overthrows throughout the course of the game. His deep ball accuracy, which was more consistent early on his career, in his career, is now streaky. And it's definitely concerning, right? Um, you know, Malik Neighbors, eight, he did his thing, had 12 catches for 115 yards on 15 targets, uh, but unfortunately suffered a concussion and left the game late. Now, I don't know if this will affect his week five status against the Seahawks, Typically, since the Tua concussion back in 2022, teams have been pretty conservative as far as playing guys the next week. But Neighbors does have a chance to suit up against Seattle since the Giants did play on Thursday. It would be 10 full days between games for Big Blue. Uh, Neighbors' stats through the first four weeks of the season are remarkable. He leads the NFL in catches with 35 and 20 plus yard catches. You want to talk about ex explosive plays like Brian Dable has emphasized this season. Neighbors brings you explosive plays, seven catches of 20 or more yards. That ranks the top uh, number in the NFL. 386 total receiving yards. That's second and three touchdown receptions tied for third. So, you know, all in all, Malik Neighbors is a stud. Uh, there was a flag fest, as I mentioned. Giants couldn't take advantage of Dallas's 11 penalties. And what now for Big Blue? Well, I think if you're the Giants, the young players are really what you're looking at at this point, right? 
We know Jones and Singletary and Darius Slayton are the veterans of the offense. They've been in this league for a while now. Malik Neighbors, I just highlighted him. But Wandale Robinson, guys, I think has solidified himself despite being a slot weapon and undersized as the Giants' number two option in the passing game. I think he's officially passed Darius Slayton as the Giants' number two receiver. He had 11 catches for 71 yards on 14 targets. Um, Robinson is really good in the short game, making guys miss. I want to see him get more um, a higher average as far as yards per catch. I definitely want to see his route tree expand a little bit more towards the intermediate level of the field rather than just short. But all in all, he's been playing really well. Um, you know, defensively, the Giants had just one sack, but the young core is there with Kayvon Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence, and Brian Burns. I expect them to get better throughout the course of the season. Cordell Flott was forced to start this week. Uh, due to the injuries of Adoree Jackson and Drew Phillips, both dealing with calf issues. And Flott wasn't bad. He started opposite of Deontay Banks and had two passes defended. Now when your matchup for most of the night is Jalen Tolbert and Brandon Cooks, an older Brandon Cooks, um, you definitely have opportunities to make some plays. On the other hand, Deontay Banks really struggled. Lamb ate on Thursday night, had seven catches for 98 yards and a touchdown. We were expecting Lamb to have a solid game. Um, Giants kicker Greg Joseph, five for five field goals. I think he will be the kicker for the next few weeks at least until Graham Gano is ready to return. And, yeah, coming up for the Giants at Seattle week five, home against Cincinnati for – uh, what's supposed to be, I think it's a Monday night football game, but there's or a Sunday night football game, I'm not sure, but uh, there's a chance the Giants could get flexed out of that. And then they're home against Philadelphia. So obviously Seattle, at, at the time of this recording, is 3-0 and playing the Detroit Lions on Monday night football, although their opponents the first three weeks have been relatively easy. I believe they've played the Broncos, Patriots, and then I think they played the Panthers too. Um, Bengals, one and three, not a very convincing win against the Carolina Panthers. And then the Philadelphia Eagles with Saquon Barkley, um, you know, several former Giants on the Eagles, you know, Nick Gage, James Bradbury. Those are teams that are all beatable for the Giants. And I even think the Seahawks as well, despite their record. But we'll talk about that on this uh, Wednesday's show. I'm definitely excited to see how that pans out. Um, for the New York football giants, I don't really know if uh, Malik Neighbors is going to play on Sunday. But if he does, the Giants definitely have a shot against the Seahawks. If he doesn't play, there's no shot. And it's crazy I'm saying that one player makes or breaks a game. But with the way the Giants looked against Dallas offensively, the play calling was there from Brian Dable. I think that's a plus we're learning this season. The Giants just can't score touchdowns. They just can't. And I'll tell you this, Seattle's defense is better than Dallas's. A couple former Giants back there with Leonard Williams and Julian Love. We know what Devin Witherspoon did to Daniel Jones last season with that incredible pick six. So, yeah, there's reason to be concerned going into Seattle against an elite defense. But Malik Neighbors makes explosive plays, and that is a game changer. One other note, the Giants worked out several people on Monday, including wide receiver and kick returner Karis Jackson, who was signed to the practice squad, a second-year player from Georgia coming over from the Tennessee Titans. There is a tie there with Tim Kelly, uh, who is the tight ends coach as far as offensive staff and personnel goes. Had several big returns this preseason before Tennessee before suffering a knee injury. It was not good enough to make the final 53-man roster, but it's a solid option on the practice squad if something happens to Amir Marset. Um, and, of course, Gunnar Olszewski is still out due to an injury. So, folks, let me know what you think below in the comments section about the Giants being 1-3. and three. Do you think they can come out of this hole over the next three weeks? Do you think Big Blue will continue to slide? You know, we'll talk about some possible players if the Giants keep losing. Uh, for the trade deadline, we know Jalen Hyatt, Darius Slayton, Aziz Ojolari have been tossed around. I'm excited to hear what you guys think below in the comments section. Make sure to ring the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up. Follow us on all of our social media on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. I appreciate you all watching. 
this video. Check out Sam and I Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern for the latest on the Giants and Seahawks this upcoming week. And without further ado, let's go Big Blue.